Welcome to Bando Pit Stop. I am Sri Govind Mohanan, and in this video, we will be taking a deep look into the world of helmets. Motorcycle helmets are a must have riding gear. That part is already established by now, and you guys already know that. But what bugs me the most is that even though we do a lot of research when it comes to buying a motorcycle, when it comes to a motorcycling helmet, we do not do that much research, and that needs to change. So, this video can be considered as that ultimate guide to buying a motorcycle helmet. And in this video, we have done the research and we are trying to explain what is a motorcycle helmet and how you should approach in buying one. But before we begin, Please make sure you subscribe to our channel because your support means a lot to us. The first step in buying a motorcycle helmet is to understand your own requirement, which means what kind of riding you'll be doing mostly, whether it is daily riding, weekend riding, or is it uh, long touring or even dirt riding. Once you understand the type of riding you'll be mostly doing, it'll be easier for you to pick a type of helmet. Now that we understand the type of riding that we do, we can choose the type of helmet that suits that. Now, some of the helmets available in the market right now are full face helmets, open face helmets, modular helmets, motocross helmets, and even dual cross helmets. A full face helmet offers great protection. Now, as you can see, these full face helmets offer protection to your head, your face, and sometimes even your neck. But where it really matters is that it offers great chin and jaw protection, one of the most vulnerable parts when in an accident. Another great thing about the full face helmet is this that they are highly versatile which means you can use them for variety of purposes and not just highway riding. These can even be used for daily commuting or uh, even your weekend riding. Next up are open face helmet. This open face helmet offers protection on the top side and on the back and no protection on the front. These are commonly used by scooter riders. Since the protection is low on this type of helmets, we recommend it only for slower speed ridings. Moving on, we have the modular helmets. Now, modular helmets can be considered as a mix of open face and full face helmets. Why? Because in this helmet, you can open the visor and the chin bar portion. The one thing that we have to understand about the modular helmet is that they are considerably heavier than the full face helmets. Why? Because of the same opening mechanism. Also, when compared to the full face helmets, these are less safe, but more safer than the open face helmets. The motocross or dirt helmets are purposefully made to be ridden on the tracks. These are very lightweight and are designed for maximum protection. They have accentuated chin areas and larger visor openings. However, this does not come with visors and a rider will have to ride with goggles. Lastly, we have the dual cross helmet. Now, these helmets can be considered as a mix of motocross and open face helmet. This comes with a visor and the chin area is not that protruded when compared to the motocross helmet. These can be used to be ridden on off-road and on-road. Since this helmet comes with more padding, these are mostly preferred by long tourists and adventure riders who rides in a more upright riding posture. Now that we have an idea about the kind of helmet that we need, we can start looking for the brands that we like. To do this, we can start researching a brand's information in their website. But oftentimes when we look at a brand's website, we'll be hosted with plenty of jargons that's designed to sell their products. So, let us declutter the information. When it comes to helmet, all that you have to understand is about the following. The padding, the form, the shell, the visor and the retention mechanism. Let us begin with the retention system or closing mechanism. When it comes to closing mechanism, there are two types. The micrometric buckles and the D-ring system. If you are looking to take your motorcycle onto the track, then only double D-ring systems are allowed there. And most budget helmet comes with micrometric buckles. The next component on a helmet is a visor. Now, most manufacturers now offer anti-fog, anti-scratch and UV treatments in their visors. Some of them are even pin lock ready. But what you have to understand about a helmet visor is that these kind of treatments tend to eventually wear off. So, you will have to get them replaced. Let us now move on to the most important part of a helmet. The padding, the foam and the shell. Padding is what comes in contact with your face. Now, when it comes to padding, the keyword that you would look for is removable and washable. In a hot country like ours, removable and washable paddings are an absolute must-have. So, most of the manufacturers are starting to offer them. However, more entry-level models of helmets are yet to do that. Almost every helmet now comes with an EPS layer, that is the expandable polystyrene. But what sets a good helmet apart from the not-so-good ones are that they come in multiple layers. A smaller density layer for smaller impacts and a heavier density layer for heavier impacts. So, 
If a manufacturer mentions dual density or even multiple density layer of EPS forms, then you know they are good. Lastly, we have the shell, the part you see on the outside of your helmet. When it comes to the shell, only the following keywords matter. Number one, thermoplastic. Now, this is a material that you will find on almost every entry level helmet. These are affordable and heavy materials. And when crashed, these tend to crack into heavy bits of pieces. Next up is polycarbonate. Now polycarbonate is not that different when compared to thermoplastic, especially when it is crashed because the cracks and the pattern of the crack is almost the same. However, the polycarbonate is much lighter and a bit more expensive. Next up is fiberglass. Now when, where fiberglass greatly differ from the other material is that when crashed, it tends to break in different directions, thus transferring the impact much more efficiently to the EPS layers. This means that fiberglass absorbs the impact of a crash much more efficiently than the other two materials. Also, fiberglass is much more expensive and more lighter. If a helmet manufacturer mentions any of the above, know that they are one of the best and lightest material now available in the market. However, having a lighter or better shell does not really mean that helmet is safe. Why? Because a carbon fiber shell with a single form EPS is not as safe as you think. So, how do you know whether a helmet is safe? It's by checking the safety standards and ratings. Helmet safety and standards tells you that whether a helmet is safe or not. Some of the most common safety ratings and standards are DOT, ECE and Snell. When it comes to DOT, the Department of Transportation, the rating is FMVSS218. Even though the DOT follow a very strict and thorough procedure in all its testing, the reliability of it is always questioned. Why? Because the testing is mostly done by either independent contractors or even the manufacturers themselves. The ECE 22.05 is issued by Economic Commissions of Europe. It is a much newer test and also one of the most widely recognized tests across the globe. Unlike the DOT, the testing is done by independent labs against the standards given by ECE. So this takes the testing away from the manufacturers. Lastly, Snell can be considered as the gold standard in helmet safety ratings. Where Snell really stands out is that it can take you to the tracks. Other than these already mentioned ratings, you might also find FIM or sharp ratings on your helmets. The next thing to consider when buying a helmet is its weight. Remember, lightweight helmets are always better because it will be very comfortable to wear and easier on your shoulder and neck. The only proper way to check if a helmet is lightweight is by checking the actual weight on the helmet or on the website. Now that we have learned a lot about helmets, let us move on and do the next process in buying a helmet. That is to understand the size of a head. Now here is where you'll have to do some work. You can also ask a friend to help because you'll have to measure your head size for this. In order to understand your head size, here's what you'll have to do. Take a tape or even a thread and ask your friend to measure your head size over your eyebrows on your forehead, including the widest part. If you're using a tape, you already know your size. If you're using a thread, cross it that against the measuring tape, then you'll understand your size. Now that you know the size of your head, all you have to do is go to the manufacturer's website, cross check your size with the chart given in the website, and you'll understand the helmet size that fits you. If you're not planning to get your helmet online, then you'll definitely have to visit a good store. When you're at the store, make sure you let the sales staff know about your requirements, especially your size, because that will help save time both you and for the staff. Now, at a store like Bandlow Speed Shop, you'll be hosted with a wide variety of helmets. So if you have a brand preference, do let us know. Or you can also shortlist the ones you like. Once you shortlist your favorite helmet, then it's time to wear it. Because no matter what you do, you'll always have to wear the helmet to know whether it fits you right. When you try the helmet on, make sure you look for fitment. Because a helmet should not be too loose or too tight. When wearing the helmet for the first time, you'll have to adjust the form and also your ears so that the helmet fits you properly. Remember, a new helmet is not broken in yet, so you'll feel a bit discomfort and that's okay because a helmet will eventually get loose. If in case you feel severe discomfort when wearing a helmet, then you'll have to either change the size or the helmet itself. So here's how we check for fitment, that is whether a helmet is fitting you properly or not. When you're wearing the helmet, you should feel the cushions against your cheeks. Your cheeks should be pushed up a little. After that, you'll have to hold the helmet on your chin bar and slightly move it. If your cheeks are moving, then the helmet is fitting you right. If the helmet is moving without moving your cheeks, then it's a bit loose. Like I said earlier, helmets will eventually get a bit loose. So it's okay if it's tight when you're first wearing it because you have to understand as you move on, as you ride more, it'll get a bit loose and more comfortable to wear. Now, if you're not feeling any severe discomfort and you're feeling great wearing your helmet, then you've just found your perfect helmet. So what if you're planning to buy online? Then all you have to do is understand your head size, visit our website, order through them and the product will reach to you. Once you get the product, try them on and the fitment should be just perfect. Helmets are as important as motorcycles, sometimes even more. So it is a buying process that you should thoroughly give importance to. 
No matter what kind of riding you do, make sure you get a good quality helmet from a good quality brand. That's it for this video. See you in the next.